Hey everyone and welcome. Today, we're tackling a neat problem called find the KTH character in a string game. It sounds a bit complex, but we're going to break it down into simple, easy to understand pieces. Let's get started. So here's the game. We start with a simple string, just the letter A. Then, forever, we perform an operation. We take the current string, create a new one, by shifting every character to the next letter in the alphabet. So A becomes B, C becomes D, and Z wraps around to A. Then, we stick this new string onto the end of our original one. Our job is to figure out what the K Prachjasha character is after this process has run long enough. Let's walk through an example to make this concrete. Suppose we want the fifth character. We start with A. After one operation, the string doubles to become AB. After the next operation, AB transforms into BC dress, and our string becomes ABBC dress. That's still only four characters long, so we need one more step. We transform IBBC into BCCD and append it, giving us ABBCBCCD. Now we can just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The fifth character is BB. Okay, so the first idea that probably comes to mind is, well, let's just do what we did in the example. We can keep generating the string, doubling its length, until it's at least as long as K fix. But what if K was something huge, like a billion? The string would be gigantic, and would probably run out of memory or time. There must be a more clever way to find the character without actually building the entire string. So let's think about the structure of the string. At any step, the second half of the string is just a transformed version of the first half. This is the key insight. It means we can work backwards. Instead of building the string forwards, we can start with our target position K, and figure out where it came from. Imagine the string is split into two parts the old part, and the new transformed part. If the KTH position we're looking for is in that first half, our problem just got simpler. We can look for the same position in the smaller previous string. If K is in the second half, we know it's a transformed character. Its parent is in the first half. We just need to find that parent's position and remember that one transformation happened. All right, here's the Python code that implements this backward working idea. It might look a little magical at first, especially with the bit shifting, but don't worry. We're going to walk through each part, step by step, to see how it pulls off the trick. First, we have a loop that continues as long as k is greater than 1. Think of this loop as peeling an onion, one layer at a time. Each time we go through the loop, we're basically undoing one of the string doubling operations. The ANS variable, which stands for answer, is our counter. It keeps track of how many transformations we've undone. Inside the loop, this is how we find the midpoint of our conceptual string. This bit of code, with bit underscore length, is a clever trick to find the largest power of 2 that's less than or equal to our current k. This power of 2, which we call 2, represents the length of the first half of the string. There's a small special case for when k itself is a power of 2, but the main idea is to find that halfway mark. Once we know the midpoint t, we can reduce our problem. Since we know we are always looking in the second half of the string to get here, we subtract t from k. This effectively maps our position back to its parent position in the first half. And because we just jumped from the second half to the first, we know one transformation occurred, so we add one to our ANS counter. We repeat this until k becomes one, meaning we've traced it all the way back to the original a. So how efficient is this method? It's incredibly fast. Each step in our loop roughly halves the value of k. This is a classic logarithmic pattern, so we say the time complexity is big O of log k fast. And because we aren't building any giant strings, we're just using a few variables to keep track of numbers. The space we use is constant, or big O of 1. That's about as good as it gets. So to wrap it all up, the brute force way of actually building the string is a trap. The real key was to see the recursive structure and work backwards from Kazana. By repeatedly finding the midpoint and mapping our position to the previous smaller string, we could count the number of transformations. This elegant mathematical approach allowed us to find the answer without ever needing to store the massive string itself. I hope that breakdown made sense and was helpful. If you found it useful, a like or a subscription would be amazing. If you have any questions or a different way to solve it, drop a comment below. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Thanks for watching, keep up the great coding, and I'll see you in the next one.